Indeed it is. Joining me now is Latasha Brown, co-founder of Black Voters Matter. Latasha, good morning and thank you for being with me this morning. I, I am so frustrated and I know you are because you have been a grassroots organizer on this very issue for a very long time. And I think a lot of people at this point are just outraged and we want to know who should we direct that outrage to? Who should we be mad at at this point? Because Congress has failed. Uh, there is some frustration around the White House. Um, certainly the Republicans our poster children for voter suppression at this point, and people are helpless and, and frustrated. What, what should we be doing? You know, I think that until it's over, it's not over. I think we have to push at this point right now to make sure that the administration makes it a priority. Until the end of the year, we have to continue, and even then we have to take it to the next level, but we have to demand before this year closes that we need the administration to actually put action behind the words that in fact, if voting rights is important to this administration, then we should see not a recess, but you don't take a break when our, our democracy is in, the, uh, is in balance. That we have to literally put pressure on the administration and on the Senate. That I think Warnock gave a fantastic speech the other day around we have to really recognize this is structural racism that what we're experiencing, but we're also the vulnerability of the democracy in this country. This nation that keeps us here, or more so for the economic uh, package, is making sure that we're protecting the right to vote, that people are not punished because of the way they voted or who they voted. I, absolutely, but I, I, I think there's still a level of frustration um, among folks who want to take an action item tomorrow. So when you say keep putting pressure, uh, I assume you mean like make phone calls. If Congress fails, if the administration fails, if nothing is done on voting rights, you're the person on the ground across most of the states in this country. Can you out-organize their legislative failures? Absolutely not. We have been saying that from day one, that there, you can't out-organize it, that we can do what we can in the streets, but also people are frustrated. I think we started at the beginning of the year, there was a lot of momentum on the side of the Democrats that fundamentally you had a base of people who were excited that showed up, showed out, and got the results they wanted. We actually voted there. What we saw were voters actually put, their, put people in power because they expected that those people would protect their power. And so here we are at the end of the year and we still don't have voting rights legislation. No, I am saying we have to do everything. We have to disrupt. We have to shut it down. We have to do everything to make sure when we're looking at folks like Joe Madison, who is a radio personality, who's a 72-year-old man over a month, who has been fasting, that this is how serious this is. And we've got to lift our voices in this moment. We can't release because it's the holiday season. We have to actually go deeper. And so we have to, we have to demand at this point that there is voting rights protection passed before the end of the year. We just have to be unyielding and do whatever it takes to make sure that that, that is a reality. Yeah, and Joe Madison is posting a picture of him every day, uh, his weight loss, that he's sacrificing his body um, so that Congress will enact uh, voting rights legislation, which is uh, baffling to believe in 2021. This is the battle we're fighting. But, I mean, look, the people who are standing in the way, and I'm not letting Republicans off the hook because they are the architects of voter suppression, but you do have uh, Senators uh, Manchinema, as, as they're called. And I, I think what's frustrating for me and a lot of people across this country is these are two people who've likely never faced oppression, so they don't know the danger of the oppressor and they govern from a privileged perspective they govern from a space where they have never um, you know heard the stories of people being beaten to death um, to vote people being you know congressman john lewis having his skull cracks for the right to vote so it's incredibly um enraging to watch these two people say oh well you know it's a filibuster what can we do Let's just assume that they might be watching this program this morning. What words would you have for Manchin and Cinema when they think the filibuster is more important to protect than our democracy? One, I think that they've taken an oath that they represent the people. When you're looking at the economic disparities, when you're looking at even the state of West Virginia, that we need to make sure that we're passing progressive legislation, that the people of Virginia, right, West Virginia, are able to get the kind of access to health care and other things that they need. Right, when you're looking at who cinema represents, not at her, but if you look at who she represents, that her population is also impacted, a sizable part of her electoral base, from Latino voters in her state that actually helped undergird her campaign are under attack right now, but also there's an agenda that the, the people that she represents want to actually advance their lives and their quality of life. So I'm asking, I think there are three things. One, that this is an issue about access, this is the issue about justice, this is an issue about protecting democracy. We want you to do your job. 
to do your job and represent the people who have actually put you in office, represent what you made an oath to in terms of protecting democracy, and we expect that you will do the right thing and not hold on to the leverage of a, a, a uh, what we know is a relic of racism, which has been the filibuster that has been used to actually work against so, uh, social justice issues and voting rights in this country, but that you would stand on the side of right because you know what history will tell the story. Well, we will see. I want you to take a listen to uh, Vice President Kamala Harris. She was on with our friend Charlemagne the God, uh, and they had this exchange. We'll talk about it on the other side. So who's the I real? So who's the real president of this country? Is it Joe Manchin or Joe Biden, Madam Vice President? Come on, Charlemagne. I really. Come on. I, it's Joe Biden. I can't no, tell. No, no, sometimes. no, 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 no. It's Joe Biden, and don't start talking like a Republican about asking whether or not he's president. Do you think Joe Manchin and, is and a problem? It's Joe and, it's Joe and it's Joe Biden, and I'm vice president, and my name is Kamala Harris. I can appreciate Madam Vice President's uh, assertion there. However, like I said, there's a lot of frustration across this country from the folks like you who organize, from the folks who risk life and limb during a global pandemic to vote. And Joe Manchin and, and Kirsten Cinema are the people, the two people standing in the way of uh, policies that will impact hundreds of millions of people across this country. Uh, you know, these are two people I respect, but I, I take Charlemagne's point because he's speaking for a lot of people who feel that frustration. Your thoughts? I, I mean, I agree, but I do want to say that I was actually happy to see Vice President Harris assert herself and say, listen, yes. you know, the truth is that I am the vice president. We're not going to marginalize, because there has been a narrative to marginalize the ability and the power of the president. Now, whether he's used it to what I think to you, particularly around voting rights, that's another question I like. But to undermine that he has the power to do it, he absolutely has the power to lead in that. And I don't, and I think he's fully capable of doing it. I think there's two separate issues. I think Sanima and Manchin are absolutely in the way. And I do believe that the president should put more pressure on them, but that does not undermine the president is the person in power, not Nancy. And that's why we have to hold the administration down. Yeah, and I think you're right. It was great to see Madam Vice President, um, you know, say put some respect on my name and let me let you know that we're we're in power uh, and in control. So we'll we'll see what happens, Latasha. I, every time something like this comes up, I think about you and the important work that you do. Um, and so there are a lot of people who look to you for guidance around these issues. So you'll have to come back and join us when we have more time to talk about voting rights. Thank you so much, Latasha Brown. Thank you. Happy holidays and come.